It's Monday, May 9. In the headlines, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says government will not back down on Zozos. Regionally, Carica mulling over participation at Summit of Americas. And in sports, Shelly Ann Fraser Price produced a world leading 100 meter sprint. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I am Simone Absalom Gale. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says this year's Jamaica 60 Diaspora Conference, set to be held in Kingston, will bring Jamaica's past and future into focus. The Prime Minister shared his thoughts on Jamaica's Diamond Jubilee at the launch of the conference on Friday. Gabriel Thompson has more in this report. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says that this year's Diaspora Conference is significant as Jamaica is celebrating 60 years of independence. If we have learned anything from the past 60 years, it is that in true Jamaican spirit, we must strengthen our resolve to build that which works, that which offers prospects for progress, that which nurtures the human spirit and leads us to chart better pathways for our collective development. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Kamina Johnson-Smith, says the conference serves as a call to action. The government recognizes that our nationals overseas are key actors on the international stage and that your sphere of influence in your host countries are of tremendous value to Jamaica. As investors, philanthropists, bridge builders, brand ambassadors, lobbyists, marketers, and of course, consumers. Minister Johnson Smith says the conference will provide the necessary forum to widen discussions on relative issues of trade. Such as digital public service delivery, digital skills for the general workforce, digital infrastructure, cyber security and reliable secure data flows. So you all now understanding why Prime Minister is here, right? <laughs> this is digitization agenda. Absolutely, we invite our diaspora members and the public and private sector to consider these issues in their respective deliberations. She says these discussions will allow Jamaica to position herself more strategically in the global political economy. The three-day conference, which starts on June 14, will be held in a hybrid format, facilitating the participation of Jamaicans across the globe. Locally, a maximum of 50 participants will be attending in person at the Foreign Ministry building and a virtual platform which will host an unlimited number of online audience members. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the government of Jamaica rejects the abuse of Jamaica's citizens by law enforcement. He said this in response to recent videos showing altercations between law enforcement and citizens in the Denham Town community. It is really sad what is happening there, where it is obvious that there are attempts to challenge the security forces and the security forces in their response and in their conduct sometimes would have uh, gone over and beyond what is expected of them in the use of force on our citizens. So I have had several discussions with the Chief of Defense Staff and the Minister of National Security, and we are monitoring this very closely. The Prime Minister says certain instructions about the conduct of the security forces in those areas were given and he expects that those directives will be properly and thoroughly executed to ensure that life is preserved and security enhanced. I just want to reinforce that the government of Jamaica uh, will never in any way empower our security forces to abuse our citizens. And I want that to be absolutely clear and understood. Uh, and I think everyone who wears uh, a uniform and is under oath to serve and protect must understand that directive of the government. We must be serving and protecting our citizens. But our constitution... Mr. Holness is calling on citizens to change their reaction to authority. Too often, 
we have seen where police officers are conducting their lawful duties and military personnel as well. And there is a high level of unreasonable resistance. Confrontation, unnecessary, which leads to conflict. So in as much as we have to hold strong reign on our security forces, I think each and every citizen has to change the way in which we respond and react to authority and to the law enforcers. Sections of the Denham Town community have been under a zone of special operation for several months. Prime Minister Holness is warning about attempts to put an end to the Zozo in Denham Town. To whichever intelligence is operating behind the criminality, that the government of Jamaica will not pull down the zone of special operations in Denham Town to give space to criminals. Let me just make that absolutely clear. So if there is anyone who is deliberately trying to plan, coordinate, stoke, that will not work. Mr. Holness says he will be touring the community of Denham Town soon to meet with residents and members of the joint security team. The Prime Minister was speaking at a handing over ceremony of a social housing unit in Kingston on Friday. State Minister in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, reiterates the government's support for exclusive breastfeeding as part of the Healthy Lifestyle Thrust. At the Ministry of Health and Wellness, our stance on breastfeeding is that it is required a whole society approach, meaning all of us, family, the policy makers, and employers, to name a few. It is our intent to reinforce this level of support across the entire health system in order to continuously improve the appropriate environments for mothers to breastfeed. Exclusive breastfeeding gives infants the ability to develop healthy bodies and bright minds and stimulates lifelong health benefits for mothers. Statistics show that less than 50% of infants in Jamaica are currently breastfed after six months. And Minister Cuthbert Flynn says this will have to change. Together, our efforts can move Jamaica closer to meeting the fifth global nutrition target for 2025 to increase the rate of exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months up to at least 50%. India's President Ramnath Kovin will pay a visit to Jamaica and St. Vincent and the Grenadines from May 15 to May 21. India's Ministry of External Affairs made the announcement on Saturday. The ministry says that this would be the first ever visit by an Indian head of state to these countries. According to the release during his visit, President Kovin will hold delegation-level talks with his Jamaican counterpart, Governor-General Sir Patrick Allen. He will also meet Prime Minister Andrew Holness and other dignitaries and will address the joint sitting of the two houses of Jamaican Parliament. Kovin will also pay a state visit to St. Vincent and the Grenadines from May 18 to 21, during which he will hold discussions with his Vincentian counterpart, Governor General Susan Dugan. Fast food, street food. Caribbean people are known for their love of spicy food, often cooked in oil. Continuous greasy and fatty food puts you at risk for chronic diseases such as heart disease and diabetes. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the percentage of children consuming the minimum recommended number of food groups fell by a third in 2020 compared to 2018. The cost of food is also a factor. Although relatively inexpensive, these food choices have come at a high price. Community dietitian in the Ministry of Health's Nutrition Unit, Carl Verweeks, explains. What we see now is, a, of course, an increased consumption of foods that contain high in fat, high in salt, and high in sugar. Um, in terms of our younger generation or the young people, uh, we have noted an increase in terms of childhood obesity. Um, we have our teenagers, of course, who 
would be purchasing a lot of street food so we have like a fried food culture in terms of like fried chicken um, we love fried foods so fried bakes we fried plantains we would roast the bread fruit and then fry it in 2018, according to the World Health Organization, NCDs were estimated to be the cause of 81% of deaths in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, with cardiovascular disease making up 36%. And like many of their Caribbean neighbors, Vincentians love sugar-sweetened beverages, including local drinks. But throughout the pandemic, Vincentians have displayed a level of resilience that has given Ministry of Health officials hope. Hope depends on all of us being able to make the changes. Being a, it's a lifestyle, okay? So we're not going to expect anyone to get up in the morning and just cut out juice, cut out sugar, but you gotta make gradual changes um, for in terms of exercise. You know, you gotta create um, lifestyle patterns or changes. Uh, one of the things we saw during COVID, just to mention, was that a lot of intentions embraced our old airport to engage in physical activities, so walking, right? So exercise, so simple things like that. Um, when we look at NCDs, we will see it's, it's passes from a lot of times from one generation to the next. So you may be dealing with a child who is obese, but there's obesity with the parents as well. So it's up to us, me, you, and the general public has been sentenced to look at our lifestyle to say that we don't want these chronic diseases, the diabetes, the high blood pressure, the cancer to pass down from one generation to the next. The ministry could do so much, we as health professionals could do so much, but at the end of the day, it has to do with the empowerment of persons to make changes. Time now for your regular market updates from Danita Rodney in the Business Report. Scotia Jamaica Life Insurance Company last week introduced a new insurance project called Scotia Elevate Universal Life Policy. The policy is designed to provide a practical option in addressing the worrying trend of under and uninsured Jamaicans. President and CEO of Scotia Group, Audrey Tugwell Henry, spoke of the importance of launching the project now. We believe that Scotia Elevate is important now because we recognize that a number of Jamaicans do not have sufficient insurance. And Scotia Elevate allows for greater insurance coverage, it allows our customers to have uh, an insurance product that gives them some level of investments as well. And we also believe that the simplicity of the product, the convenience of signing up for the product is exactly what our customers want right now. So we are focusing on convenience and we are focusing on coverage for our customers. And we also recognize that more and more Jamaicans need to have insurance. As a country, the, the level of insurance protection is still lower than is desirable and we want to play our part in getting our customers insured so that they can plan for the uncertainties of life. Director of Sales and Services at Scotia, Karen Chung, took the time to speak of the benefits of the new policy. Scotia Elevate combines the best of both worlds, higher insurance coverage with customized investments to suit whatever financial goals it is that you want to achieve. Scotia Elevate allows you to get insurance coverages from $3.5 million up to $12 million, an accidental death, death benefit and also accidental death and dismemberment benefit, $3.5 million up to $6 million. Now all of this high insurance coverages you can get for no medical, no underwriting and for one low premium. So those customers who have dreams, whatever it is, whether it is owning their own home, first home, or they already have a home and they want a second home, children's education, or just want to have some funds set aside to grow their portfolio, Scotia Elevate is right for that customer. It's zero to 70. So a lot, a wide cross-section of Jamaicans are able to enjoy Scotia Elevate. She says the product is also available for persons who are already insured. Indeed. 
as I mentioned before, some Jamaicans don't have insurance, they're underinsured. So whether or not you have life insurance, with Scotia insurance or otherwise, you are allowed to enjoy our Scotia Elevate. You can get up to $12 million in life insurance coverage. So you assess what it is that you currently have and how much more you need, and we'll be happy to assist you with Scotia Elevate. Additional information on Scotia Elevate and other financial solutions are available on their website. Now for your market updates. In foreign exchange trading for Friday, May 6, the US dollar sold for an average of $155.83. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $122.47. The pound sterling traded for $191.43. And the euro sold for an average of $164.94. The following reflects the movement of the JSE indices in Friday's trading session. The JSE indices index advanced by 1,210 points to close at over 400,000 units. The junior market index advanced by 5 points to close at over 4,000 units. The combined market index advanced by 1,184 points to close at over 400,000 units. And the All Jamaican Composite Index advanced by 726 points to close at over 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 110 stocks of which 54 advanced, 42 declined, and 14 traded firm. Stocks advanced for Access Financial Services Limited, Barita Investments Limited, and Berger Payne's Jamaica Limited. Stocks declined for 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited, 1834 Investments Limited, and AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited. Trading firm were CAC 2000 9.5% Cumulative Redeemable Preferred Shares, Equity Line Mortgage Investment Corporation Preferred Shares, and JMMB Group 5.75% Preferred Shares. The following companies represent the overall volume leaders. AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited with over 3 million units. Future Energy Source Company Limited Ordinary Shares and Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shares with over 2 million units. In regional stocks, in Trinidad and Tobago, Clico Investment Fund was the volume leader with over 9,000 shares, followed by Epic Caribbean Property Fund Limited SCC Development Fund with one share being traded. On the Barbados Stock Exchange, Cave Shepherd and Company Limited was the volume leader with over 96,000 shares, followed by First Caribbean International Bank trading 169 shares. Barbadians are being told salary increases should not be the first option to address rising costs. CBC Barbados has the details. Indeed, it creates the risk of a sort of wage price spiral because once you once the wages have, have also risen, then that is going to be followed by increased prices. And and, and we certainly here in Barbados uh, have had that experience in the late 70s, early 80s, where we, we tried to match the the price increases with the the wages and and, and all you had really was uh, very high inflation until probably the the early 80s and then it was able to to taper off but you come back to the problem which i think marla has highlighted is that once you have uh, prices increasing rapidly then those who are at the bottom will be perhaps impacted more in market data for oil, oil prices have slipped alongside equities and weighed down by a strong dollar and demand concerns on the back of continued coronavirus lockdowns in China, the world top oil importer. Brent crude fell $2.27 or 2% to $110.12 a barrel and West Texas Intermediate crude was at $107.38 a barrel down $2.39 or 2.2%. And that was the business report on PBC. I'm Danita Rodney. In regional news, the Bahamas government says identifying the cause of death of three American visitors over the weekend will begin once the remains have been legally identified. The incident happened at Emerald Bay Resort in Exuma. Acting Prime Minister Chester Cooper in a statement on Friday said that as the parliamentary representative of Exuma, he has reached out personally to the families to offer condolences on behalf of the people of Exuma and the Bahamas. Mr. Cooper says that while the cause of death is unknown, he has been advised that foul play was not suspected. 
another American said to be the wife of one of the deceased, was airlifted to New Providence to receive treatment at the Princess Margaret Hospital. She has since been flown to the United States for further medical treatment. In a press release issued after the incident, Sandler's expressed, quote, deep sadness, end quote, adding that, quote, nothing is more important to Sandler's resorts than the safety of our guests, end quote. In Trinidad and Tobago, members of the House of Representatives unanimously passed the Sexual Offenses Amendment Bill 2021 with no voting against or abstentions. TTT Live has the details. Attorney General Reginald Amwar, in piloting the bill, noted that the constitutional importance of sexual offenses legislation goes back to 1986, when then Prime Minister George Chambers and then opposition leader Basio Pandey agreed to its passage. He said there must be continued vigilance to protect the vulnerable in society. The government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago on which I have the privilege to serve, continues to bring laws to protect different categories of persons in our population. Laws to protect the vulnerable in our society, example, child marriage, domestic violence, bail, trafficking in persons, anti-gang, evidence, firearms, children's court, family and children division, criminal division, pepper spray legislation. All of these are a holistic approach to seeking to protect the vulnerable in this society. A.G. Amwar quoted a High Court judgment in December 2020 on a sexual offenses matter in which the judge stated that a teenager who resides in an urban community in Trinidad in the 21st century was robbed of her childhood. The judge commenced with the following quotation from, from a vulnerable female member of this society, quote, I never completed school as a result of my kids at a young age. I had my daughter of, at the age of 13 years. I was then a Form 1 student, and the school name is given. After giving birth to my daughter, I went back to school and continued my schooling. I had advanced to Form 2, but became pregnant again with my son. I was 14 years old. I never returned to school after having my son. The Caribbean community CARICOM leaders are pondering whether they will participate in the ninth summit of the Americas to be held in the United States in June. Should Washington extend an invitation to Venezuela opposition leader Juan Guaido while leaving out Miguel Diaz Canel of Cuba? The summit, which is to be held between June 6 to 10 in Los Angeles, California, is to be chaired by the United States. Washington says that the meeting is expected to focus on building a sustainable, resilient, and equitable future for the hemisphere. A statement from the U.S. says that they will work with the region's stakeholders towards securing leader-level commitments and concrete actions that dramatically improve pandemic response and resilience, promote a green and equitable recovery, build strong and inclusive democracies, and address the root causes of irregular migration. But Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda Gaston Brown told the Caribbean Media Corporation that his country, quote, does not believe in the policy of ostracizing Cuba and Venezuela, and we do not recognize Juan Guaido as the president of Venezuela, end quote. He further said, quote, in those circumstances, Antigua and Barbuda will not participate, end quote. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez confirmed that the matter had been discussed by leaders of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States on a Saturday and raised during the CARICOM Intercessional Summit held in Belize in March. In Belize, former Attorney General Michael Perafit says the existing system in place at the police department to tackle the perennial issue of crime and violence is failing the country's citizens. He adds that when one considers the moral of law enforcement officers, it's a virtual powder keg. More from Channel 5 Belize. It's not working. Overall crime. When you look at the, the, the statistics for overall crime, up to the same period, or, or rather from April 1st to April 22nd, as we did in the press conference, 33 incidents of violent crime, murder, robbery, rape. Last year, the same period was 11 less. There's just a massive increase, and it's getting nowhere. It's getting nowhere. 
and then you have the police whose pay, their pay has been cut, they're demoralized, they need new people to breed some fresh life into them, or it is not going to work. And then the police will hear about things, and it's our job to point out things. So when you look at that, and then when you juxtapose that next to the fact that you're asking a policeman who is 10% lower, inflation with the price of everything going up, which Brother Tony will get into. When you add that together, now pressure cooker waiting to explode. So we need something, we need an injection of new ideas. On Friday, Guyana and Brazil signed two treaties aimed at developing areas of cooperation in civil and criminal matters between the neighboring states. Gordon Mosley has that report. The agreements were signed during the one-day visit to Guyana by the president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro. One of the treaties will see the parties offer advice on civil matters, which will include civil, labor and administrative law, as well as criminal sentences. The other treaty strengthens mutual cooperation in criminal matters, which will see the two governments providing assistance to each other in connection with the investigation or prosecution of criminal offenses, including the restraint, seizure, or confiscation along with the disposal and return of assets. The ministries responsible for public security and justice in Guyana and Brazil will spearhead the treaties. President Irvin Ali said today that it was a good day as the two sides were able to further elaborate on areas of focus for the future of both nations. In sports, on Saturday, two-time Olympic 100-meter champion Shelly Ann Fraser-Price produced a world-leading 10.67 seconds to win the 100 meters at the Kipkina Classic in Kenya. Fraser Price finished ahead of Basant Hamida of Egypt, who clocked 11.02 seconds, and Shannon Ray of the USA, 11.33 seconds. Namibian Christine Mboma was unable to finish the race. Her time erases the 10.87 of Cambria Sturges from the USA last month for the fastest time this year. This is also the sixth fastest time in the women's 100 meters. It was no surprise, so says former England cricketer Roland Butcher as he discussed the recent appointment of Nicholas Peran as captain of the West Indies T20 and ODI squad. He made the comment during a recent airing of Line and Length. Well, Nicholas Peran, as you know, shadowed um, Kieran Pollard for the last as his vice captain. Got the opportunity to captain um, which he did pretty well in, but again, you know, that is where there's no pressure on you because the captain is coming back. But the fact that he was vice captain was they were grooming him for the position of captaincy. That's the that's the normal thinking. So really it's no great surprise after Pollard decided that it was time to go, that Warren was elevated to that position. And really that's perhaps the easiest job the selectors will have to do this year. Sharing his views on Peran as a captain, former West Indies batsman Phil Wallace had this to say. Well, yes, his elevation to the to the captaincy was always there. Uh, he's been a, a good a good deputy uh, to Pollard. Uh, the selectors would have made the recommendation. We don't know who else they recommended for that job as captain, but Puran obviously uh, he tick all the boxes and the, the board went with him. I was a bit surprised that they gave him the, the fifty over. The ODI captaincy. I, I was going to. I thought they were going to give him the T20, and then maybe get Shea Hope, who was the deputy in our in our ODI squad uh, before Nicholas. But they decided to go with Puran. But as you said, yes, he's led the team on, on on different occasions when the former captain was not there, and the players seem to rally around him. He seems to have as as the norm. The norm is now the respect of that dressing room, and despite being a young man, not a, not a lot of experience in leadership. But he seems to be able to, to, to get the guys to do what he wants them to do. And at the end, win uh, games for West Indies. So it's a start for him. He started already. And I hope that this is just a continuation. And let's hope that Puran, and along with his deputy, Shea Hope, they can now turn the tables and bring some good positive results, which are wins in our ODI cricket. And that's the news on PBC Jamaica. Remember to follow us on all social media pages at PBC Jamaica. Thank you for watching.